Hello and welcome to the Learning Reading Hub. In this video, I'm going to share with you three orthographic mapping activities. Two of them are for learning high frequency words. And the third activity, you can just use it for practicing any word really. This video is actually a fragment of a couple of other videos on the channel where I go deep into explaining what orthographic mapping is and how to go about teaching high frequency words in the right way. If interested, I will leave you links to those other videos on the video description. Also, if you are new to the Learning Reading Hub, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Laura and this channel is all about learning to read and teaching reading. If this is something of interest to you, you may want to consider subscribing. We create weekly content with valuable information and resources on this topic. Also on the video description, we always tend to leave you extra links to free materials and resources for teaching children to read. So don't forget to check it out. And now without further ado, let's get started. Activity number one, using orthographic mapping to learn high frequency words. First activity is aimed at learning high frequency words using orthographic mapping principles. For extra convenience, we are going to be using a free online game called the High Frequency Words Game, which is available completely for free at our website learningreadinghub.com. So let's play! First of all, we hear at the high How many sounds can you hear? We hear the high frequency word and then we're asked how many sounds can we hear in this case two put so the letters in the right order two boxes appear and then we need to put the letters in the right order am how many sounds can you hear again we're asked how many sounds we can hear for this word in this case two put again the letters in the right order two letters appear And how many sounds can you hear? Again, put two. the letters in the right and order. Put the letters in the right order. By the way, if you have a beginner reader, you may need to be by his side or her side for working out the numbers of individual sounds, repeating the sounds slowly for him or for her. It might seem easy, but it can be tricky for them if they have not trained their ears to hear the individual sounds in words, especially because we are not used to hear the sounds in isolation, but as parts of words. Okay, it looks simple, right? But let's recap and see what we're doing here with this simple game. We're first training our ears to hear the individual sounds in words, so building up our phonemic awareness. Right after that, we're mapping or tying together the sounds, the individual sounds called phonemes, to the graphemes, the representation of sounds, or in other words, the letters. Studies show that we need around five repetitions until we store words in our memory. So imagine the power of doing this a number of times with your child. Of course, the number of repetitions depend on factors such as the level of phonemic awareness and the decoding skills of the child, the complexity of the word and the familiarity of the word. Next time we encounter one of these high frequency words, we will be using that shortcut of going to our memory of familiar words rather than doing all the process of sounding the word out from scratch. At the time I'm recording this video, I haven't had the chance to include all the high frequency words in the game. Give me time, it takes a lot of time, but also tell me if you find it useful so I can prioritize this. But in the meantime, if you want to use this activity with your child for the rest of the high frequency words that are still not included in the game, or for practicing any word whatsoever, here comes activity number two. Activity number two, using counters and boxes. So for this orthographic mapping activity that I'm going to be doing with my daughter, I only need some counters or tips or something of the kind, a pencil and a blank piece of paper. Well, in this case, I'm using a template that I created. You can actually download this template on the video description for free if you want, but you can easily do this on a blank piece of paper. Just divide it into sections. One of them remains blank 
and that is where you're gonna put your counters. And on the other section, you draw boxes. In this case, I'm using five boxes. So Mami already explained what the activity is about. It's an orthographic mapping activity. Do you wanna yeah. explain what it is yeah. like? Okay. Mummy says a word, okay. then I put the counters, the boxes, how many sounds I hear, and then I write the word. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to say the first word, okay? Yes. Okay, the first word is, listening ears, shop, shop. Move the counters first. One, shop. two... Three. Okay, now we take the counters out and can you write what word you heard? Listen. That's perfect, but the third sound goes in the third box. So that we erase that one and maybe you can put That's great. That's perfect. Okay. Oh, that looks like an M. That's fantastic. Okay. Next word, okay? Listening ears. Let's see if you need to fill the, all the boxes or not. It depends on the number of sounds. Okay, we have our counters and the next one is and the next word is chop, chop, chop. No, no, no. First move the counters. Are you ready to write down the word? Okay. That's so good. Now re let's read it. Chop. 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 Very good. For a less challenging variation of this game, you can show them the word first and then hide it. Also, instead of using counters or tips, you can use a popper like this one. Or you can ask them to tap their bodies as many times as the number of sounds that they can hear in a word. Some tips and tricks for making these activities extra effective are Work on words that contain sounds that you've just taught to your child explicitly. For instance, after teaching your child the sound ch, which is normally represented by C plus H, you can practice words that contain that sound, such as ting, chat, chop. Or after teaching them about the sound th, which is represented by the letters T plus H, you can practice words that contain that sound, such as this, that, then, them, there. Tip number two. You can also use two similar sounds in the same way I did with my daughter to make sure that they fully understand the difference. Tip number three. Use orthographic mapping principles to teach irregular words. Don't think that this process only works for regular words that do not present unexpected spellings. No, it works just the same. Let's see how to go about it with irregular words then. The word said, can it be explained phonetically? Well, yes and no, only certain parts can. So, how can you go about it? First of all, ask your child how many sounds can he or she hear in the word said. Probably he'll be able to figure out that there are three sounds in the word said. Then, on a blackboard or a piece of paper, draw three boxes. One, two, three. Now it's time to analyze 
These three individual sounds your child could hear and assign letters inside the boxes based on the sounds we hear. Let's start in this case with the first sound on the word said and the letter S. Does it make sense phonetically? Yes, it does. S is the letter you would expect in this case for the sound S. So, go and put it inside the first box. Let's look at now at the last sound. Does the letter D at the end make sense for the last sound on the word said? Yes, that is the letter you would expect for that sound. So you put it inside the third box. So you're left with AI for the A sound in the middle of the word. So put it in the middle box. That tongue does not make sense phonetically. So that is the part that needs to be memorized and learned by heart or by sight or however you want to call it. The word has. Let's approach this word the same way. How many sounds can you hear? Three, then one, two and three boxes. This set the word with your child into its individual sounds. Has. Assign the letters inside the boxes and figure out if they make sense phonetically or not. Eight makes sense phonetically, so let's put it in the box. A makes sense phonetically, let's put it in the second box. S doesn't make sense, we hear an Z sound. Then this is the part that needs to be memorized, highlighted.